Hello, good afternoon. You're watching Media Live from the News Hub. I am Portia Gabo. Coming up this afternoon. Hundreds of NAPCO beneficiaries set to hit the streets tomorrow for non-payment of allowances. Ghana Education Service introduces revised curricula that will see uniforms of basic school pupils changed. Coming up in international news, WikiLeaks co-founder Julian Assange arrested at Ecuadorian Embassy in London. In our very first story, NAPCO trainees have vowed to embark on a nationwide demonstration on Friday. The trainees have not been paid several months, and this has triggered a demonstration. In a communique issued by leadership of NAPCO coalition, it's directed its members to get ready for tomorrow's mass action. The coalition reaffirmed that under no circumstance shall it compromise on a partial fulfillment of their demands. It further asked the Secretariat to pay all arrears from November last year to March this year before Friday, April 12, 2019. The coalition said the demonstration will come off even if the authority remits February stipends in the course of the week without jointly settling that of March and all areas due trainees. And the coalition said henceforth they will demand regular payment of stipends because the finance minister made it clear in parliament that money for NAPCO is fully assured and available. It also demanded that all unplaced trainees be equally placed as soon as possible. Let's focus on this developing story. And in the studio with me is Nana Berima Asamwa. He is with the Coalition of NAPCO Trainees. Thanks for joining us, Nana Berima. Thank you, my dear. So how many months of arrears are you owed? So far, we have category of trainees. We have some of them with five months arrears. Since the inception of the initiative, they haven't been paid. And we have some of them, too they were supposed to be paid up to date, but some, uh, they got the arrears partly slashed with partial payment. So, and also the entire trainees, they were owing X two months arrears. That triggered us to arrange a demonstration like that. How many people are we talking about here? How many are you? We are almost 100,000, but with regard to the 100,000, with recent release from our CEO, he came out with a gross figure that 98,000 have been duly paid, and 2002, they've been associated with those with anomalies with regard to their details which we equally stage a contest that we, some of us initially, we had an issues on our details. We proceeded and did updates and we've updated our details with the district directorate in, 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 in countless times, countless occasions. Recently, the secretariat even opened the portal. Initially, it has been an issue even before the payment of the dispatching of the first batch payment. We raised an issue like that because they told us they've anticipated some of us didn't put the East Ridge column. We didn't feed that entry. Some of us to you know human beings we are prone to errors. So we should rather file the details with the district directory, which we equally stage a contest that in case we go there and update it, it will, at the end of the day, it will bounce back to manual cross-checking and So entries. the validation has been made? The validation has been made. 
that has been the issue. And when the validation was made, some of us we were having as far as three months arrears. They proceeded and paid X two months. I personally, they were supposed to pay me three months arrears. They ended up paying me two months, which I think it has been inconsistent. Thus, it has been an amount you've been credited me, but due to one or two counterfactual problems, you couldn't reach my closet. So now that I've updated my details, you were supposed to pay me the three months instead of slashing part of it. That, that is it. But let me proceed to give you the update. Maybe you haven't been able to chance on the current update. This morning we released, we came out with a press release. Yesterday, the secretariat started paying, in fact, which we regard as a pragmatic step of the government to address this impasse. So they've started paying the arrears and they've dispatched you know, batches of February stipends. So because of that, we as graduates, in fact, we do everything based on our intellectual capacity. Because since the purpose of the demonstration is to address our grievances. So they've started paying. Why are you going they've ahead started, with the demonstration? Yes, this morning we've came out with another release that we've suspended the demonstration. We've apportioned them up to next week Friday oh. to monitor the payment routine. After that, we will do a nationwide survey to collate the responses from trainees. And after that, we will proceed to do a comprehensive report on that. And we will confront the secret as we are speaking now, we've scheduled a meeting with the CEO. So we've, the demonstration has the, been suspended. We, we've, we've, suspend, we've suspended it until, until further notice. Just that we've given them grace period from now till next week Friday to address our plight. In case they couldn't do that, we will conduct a survey. So this is because you are suspending it because yes. the government has started paying. Yes, because that is the purpose of the demonstration, to get our plight addressed. And, you know, uh, equitably, we are graduates, we respect the rule of law. And, you know, there is the fundamentals of equity stays. He who comes to equity must come with clean hands okay so if after next week friday you still yes haven't yes paid, we, what next? We've, we've given them the benefit of the doubt because we cannot say it is a mystical gesture to intercept the demonstration we cannot presumably conclude on that we have to give them the benefit of the doubt and after next week if this issue is protracting we will proceed to confront authorities to redress it if they couldn't do it, then our next demonstration will be totally uninterrupted. Thank you very much for your time. I've been speaking to Nana Berima Samwahi as with the coalition of NAPCO trainees, and they have suspended their decision to hit the streets tomorrow. You're still watching Media Live from the News Hub. In other news, the Ghana Education Service will, from next academic year beginning in September, start using a revised curriculum for KG and primary pupils, and the revised curriculum will put a premium on reading, writing, arithmetic, and creativity. The decision to revise the curriculum for kindergarten, KG and primary schools comes 15 years after the old curriculum was introduced. From September this year, teachers from kindergarten to primary six will make use of the revised education curriculum. The curriculum should be reviewed every five years. Uh, concerns have been raised by the public in general and even the academia. You know, there's always this situation where when children move from one level to the other, the higher level complains that ah, they are not sufficiently prepared. And one of the biggest complaints has been that children are made to study too many subjects. It's also a very big uh, issue that uh, has been taken on board. According to Chairman of the Ghana Education Service Council, although there are some few additions to the curriculum, other aspects have also been remodeled. We are introducing history because we think we need to uh, instill the 
spirit of nationalism already in existence in the system are textbooks that dealt various aspects of history in the country. So when the books are compliant, you don't have to rush to print. You can use the old ones, and then as time goes on, years go on, when you revise the book, you add all those new areas that are not already in the, the book. Although the focus is now on KG to primary six, the GES says other levels of the education sector would be added in due course. A key aspect of the uh, curriculum is that we are moving away from something we call objective-based to what we call standard-based. For every region, one district, we have teams working with teachers. Certainly there are certain aspects that will be new to the teacher and therefore they need to be uh, exposed to. Meanwhile, the revised 12 subject curriculum that would make Ghanaian children confident, creative thinkers, digitally literate and well-rounded patriotic citizens has been launched. And this curriculum will put premium on reading, writing, arithmetic and creativity according to the Ministry of Education. And the change which is to be effected to the kindergarten and primary levels would be the first major change at the basic level to a curriculum that was introduced in 2000 and seven and the 2007 curriculum was the reason for the inclusion of two years of kindergarten education and four years senior high education which was later reversed to in the 2009 to 2010 academic year and the president Nana Dodankwe Kufado had hinted of the intended change earlier this year promising the curriculum would better prepare pupils to meet global challenges and the president said the curriculum would focus on making Ghanaian children confident, creative thinkers, and well-rounded patriotic citizens. Now, one of the significant changes the curriculum is to introduce is the removal of the monodex with circular ones. Let's delve more into this topic, and I have Peter Party, and he is an educationist. Thanks so much for joining us. So is there a need for a revision of the old curriculum? Thank you very much, and good afternoon. Yeah, we, the Institute for Education Studies, have uh, played some role in in the development of this new curriculum, and we think that yes, uh, it's it's been long coming. We we would have we should have done this long ago, but better late than never. So, it there is ample justification for this new curriculum, especially if you look at what this new curriculum the curriculum seeks to achieve in terms of improving the competences, the core competences of the child and preparing him for the global world. We think that this is a, 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 a curriculum that will position our basic education in, 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 at, at a, a very good uh, place. How will this do that? This would uh, this would be accomplished, of course. If you look at the, the core competencies that are supposed to be acquired by those who go through this curriculum, you would see that the curriculum seeks to improve the critical thinking and problem solving um, uh, mechanism of the child. It looks at digital literacy, of course, you mentioned that. It looks at creativity and innovation. And it also talks about communication and collaboration. So you were talking about the DEX, the Randex system. That is to enable the kids to interact among themselves and also to collaborate in projects that will be given to them by their teachers in the classroom. So these are things that uh, uh, would help the child to, 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 to develop his personal uh, uh, disposition and, and, and abilities in the, in the classroom. And, and for that matter, take it to the society. You are an educationist. How should the Ghana Education Service prepare teachers in order for this new curriculum to succeed? This is a very important question. And I, I, I keep saying, we, we keep saying from the Institute for Education Studies that our problem have never been the inability to come up with some of these important and brilliant policies and re reformations in the education sector. Our problem have been with the implementation of these policies. If you look at the curriculum reform that we did in 2007, you would realize that the, the document was so rich. But then when it came to implementation, 
a lot of issues were raised, and up to now, we've not been able to benefit fully from it. So we would continue to call on the Ghana Education Service and all relevant stakeholders that the push should now be on the fidelity of implementation of this curriculum. Teachers should be adequately prepared to own this curriculum so that they can faithfully implement it. That is the only way that Ghana... Uh, Ghana will benefit from this curriculum. That's the only way that the children of Ghanaians will benefit from this curriculum. But for for the document, it's a, a very good document. If we don't implement it well, we will never reap the benefits of it. You made an input into this new revised curriculum. Does that suggest that teachers haven't been briefed on this? The Institute for Education Studies made uh, contributions to the document. Teachers are engaged at different levels in the preparation and the implementation stage. But the, the point is that the development of the curriculum goes through a certain process. So the, the stage that we are in after launching the curriculum is to now look at implementation, which starts in September. We are pleading with the relevant state, especially the Ghana Education Service, that from now to September, continuous engagement should, 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 should go on with the teachers at the basic level. Our, our focus is to make sure that the teachers has all this curriculum so that when they know that this is our product, they will be able to market it and implement it well. Now, the school uniforms, the current ones that we know, are also going to be changed. Is this relevant? I, I, I need to make this point. You see, one of the biggest challenge we had with the previous curriculum was that when it was implemented, when it was, it, it, it was developed and, and uh, uh, out, uh, outdoor to the nation, the, the discussion shifted from the content and the quality of the, of the content to the three years, four years. And that is why most of the, those who should have gone into the document and look at the relevant, the more relevant issues, ignore them. I would say that the change in the uniform will be a trivial issue to deal with at this stage. It, it, it really does not take a lot from the education system. If, 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 if there is a way that we can focus more on the content and how we'll be able to achieve the various core competencies that have been stated in the curriculum, I think that will be more important to the Ghanaian people. The change in the, in the uniform is, is an issue I, I sincerely wish we can relegate to the background. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And Peter Patianti is with the Institute of Education Studies. You're still watching Midday Live from the News Hub. Let's now continue with the rest of our stories. And calm has been restored to Takwa in the western region after some residents there yesterday blocked the main Takwa Takwadu road to protest the deplorable state of the over 10 kilometer stretch of the main road. And the situation caused congestion on the road. School children and scores of workers were left stranded and they were forced to make their journey on foot. And the residents mounted a barrier and bent vehicle tires, a situation that prevented vehicles from moving from both sides of the road. And the protesters concerned residents of Takwa have given government one week to fix the road or they will use an excavator to cut through the road. We'll bring you updates as and when they happen. You're still watching Middle Live from the New Southern. Tempest fled in Parliament over the absence of both the majority and minority leaders. And the minority chief whip Mubarak Muntanka engaged the deputy majority leader Sarah Adrasafo in a heated argument over the issue. And Komla Kluche reports. The majority championed the extension of seatings weeks ago on the grounds that the volume of work necessitated it. But both the minority leader and the majority leader have been absent from the house supposedly on official assignment. The majority leader is reported to have been at a town hall meeting with other government officials. If all other persons or members of parliament could cancel their programs to stay in this house, I thought the majority leader who thought it was important that this house sit this week, should equally be here. 
I'm the speaker, Monday, today, that's three days gone, and I'm reliably informed. He traveled last night. Mr. Speaker, it may be important for his trip, but for him to ask us to stay for additional week, whilst he does not find it necessary to cancel his programs to stay in this house, Mr. Speaker, I think that is not a very fair position. This enraged the Deputy Majority Leader, Sarah Adwa Safo. We have five members to form leadership on both sides. Mr. Speaker, and, Mr. Speaker, and for your good self as well, to have two deputy speakers with you. Mr. Speaker, the purpose for having this is for us to be able to step in the shoes of each other and perform and let Parliament function according to the way it's supposed to function. Whether or not one leader is absent or is in, in, pre present in the House. Mr. Speaker, and if the minority chief comes here and throws dust in the eyes of everybody, including Ghana, to the effect that the majority leader is out of the jurisdiction. Mr. Speaker, the majority leader is out of the jurisdiction performing parliamentary functions. Speaker, the issue that he's raised is so disappointing. He whips and he represents Ghana also at the Pan African Parliament. So when he has to represent Ghana, he asks me for your good self to leave. Absenteeism has been a major issue in Parliament as the House has on several occasions come under attack over the spate of absenteeism without permission. The Speaker of Parliament has even had the cause to complain about the attendance of MPs which he says continues to affect business of the House. This is a very important imperative and please care for this. We need to do our duty as a planner before anything else. Honorable members, please speak. You're watching Media Live from the News Hub. You can get interactive with us. Facebook.com slash TV3 Ghana, Twitter.com slash TV3 Ghana. And for more updates on our news, you can log on to our website at 3news.com. News just in indicates that the much talked about legislation on vigilantism is being laid on the floor of Parliament by the Minister of Justice and Attorney General Gloria Ekufu. And we'll be going live to Parliament for more updates on this legislation on vigilantism. You're still watching Media Live from the News Hub. And our news just then indicates that the much talked about legislation on vigilantism is being laid on the floor of Parliament by the Minister of Justice and Attorney General Gloria Ekufu. So we'll go live to Parliament for more updates on this developing story. So, Mr. Speaker, I, I respect the Attorney General and her knowledge of constitutional law and its principles. I can understand the President is in a hurry to deal with it. We think that there must be multi-stakeholder consultation. The scourge of vigilantism is bigger than the NDC and the NPP. It's a national problem and therefore we are minded that this should not be rushed through an emergency and the Ghanaian citizens and civil society will not have opportunity to input on it. appears that a lot of guidance, a lot of guidance can be obtained from Order 119, Order 119 of our standing orders. And 119 uh, says where it is determined and certified by the appropriate committee of the House appointed in that behalf that a particular bill is of an urgent nature. That bill may be introduced without publication. The Speaker, we have had His Excellency the President come into this House when he read the State of the Nation address, Mr. Speaker, and he committed, Mr. Speaker, on page 28 of the State of the Nation, Mr. Speaker, he committed, he committed to fighting and ensuring, indeed, that we bring a stop to vigilantism within political parties. Mr. Speaker, the President was very apt in saying 
when he made reference in page 28 of the State of the Nation Address. If voluntary disbarment of political parties is not feasible, then I will initiate legislation on yes, the matter. Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I believe that the issues raised by the minority leader as to whether or not. Honorable Fusina, you stand in the point of order. Mr. Speaker, you are so rude. And I think that your rule, your, your rule is properly funded on our standing orders. That in this particular case, the proper body which has jurisdiction to so determine whether the, this bill is of an agent nature is a constitutional legal, constitutional legal of the It's premature to, de to debate the principles, the principles of the bill. It's premature. The vigilante is not there. Yes, honorable Congress. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Fusain is forgetting that, Mr. Speaker, I, you ask, gave me the permission to also submit. If it is premature, Mr. Speaker, if it is premature, this is a house of debate. So having listened to the minority leader, which is the practice of the house, you give me an opportunity, although you rule in, and that was my, my initial um, opening statement, that Mr. Speaker, we have taken your ruling. And it is in good state. But as leader of government business, I also have to show why government is committed to passing this bill under its independence. Live update from Parliament where the legislation on vigilantism has been laid before the House. He's still watching Midday Live from the News Hub. For more updates, you can log on to our website at 3news.com. Let's go back to our earlier story on the revised curriculum. And as part of new changes being introduced, the current school uniform of pupils in basic schools will be changed to a new one. And currently on your screen, are the new uniforms to be worn by basic school pupils in Ghana. In the GS revised curriculum, there's going to be a change in the current uniforms being worn by basic school pupils and the old one, which had, um, which color, the color was deep brown, is going to be changed to these ones on the screens. Coming up is the MTN video report and today our citizen journalist Joseph Tenyako is calling on authorities to provide infrastructure development for a school at Akutuklogwa in the Manya Kroba district of the Eastern Region. Akutuklogwa ROC Primary School, a school in the upper Manya Kroba district in the Eastern Region. This is the situation of our classroom as at now. We are under a palm front, and therefore, when it rains, we are at the mercy of the weather. This morning, it rained, and therefore, classes cannot come on. The school children are fun loitering about. We, came, uh, they, we contacted the DC several times to come to our aid in terms of infrastructure. All effort to get the school blocked down is in a mess. He came to do some foundation for us, and then the community did the filling. After that, he said that will be, he has now awarded the school to a contractor. For almost a year now, we have not seen the contractor. So we are now calling on the higher authorities to come to our aid. This is Joseph Tenyakon. You can also send your video reports via WhatsApp on the number 055 143 3044. You're still watching Media Live from the News Hub. We have more news coming up shortly. Do stay with us. In business this afternoon, inflation for March 2019 was 9.3% and this was a marginal increase of 0.1 percentage points from the 9.2% recorded in February. Government statistician David Combat attributed the 0.1 percentage point increase in the inflation rate for March to rise in the inflationary rates for food and non-food items. The main price drivers for the non-food inflation rate were recreation and culture, a rate of 40.1 percent, transport, a rate of 13.7 percent, clothing and footwear, a rate of 13.3 percent, 
furnishing, household equipment, and routine maintenance, a rate of 12.2%. And the drivers for the full group inflation rate were coffee, tea, and cocoa, with a rate of 13%. Mineral water, soft drinks, fruit, and vegetable juices, a rate of 11.1%. Fruits, with a rate of 10.2%, and meat and meat products, with a rate of 9.1%. The year-on-year non-food inflation rate of 9.7% is 1.3 percentage points higher than that of the food inflation rate of 8.4%. At the regional level, four regions, namely Upper West, Bono Ahafo, Western and Ashanti, recorded inflation rates above the national average of 9.3%. Upper West Region recorded the highest year-on-year -year inflation rate of 11.4%. Bono Ahaf Region recorded 10.2%, while Upper East Region recorded the lowest year-on-year -year inflation rate of 7.9% in March 2019. In March 2019, the year-on-year -year inflation rate of imported items, which was 11.1%, was 2.6 percentage points higher than that of locally produced items of 8.5%. This is attributed to the depreciation of the city, import duties, transport costs, and other charges. For transport, you know that our local manufacturers are able to do things that help maintain our vehicles. But a lot of it are imported. Clothing and footwear, some of it are local, others are imported. Uh, then we had furnishings house and household equipment. You can have some of it locally, others imported. The Consumer Price Index, CPI, measures changes over time in the general price level of goods and services that households acquire for consumption. Meanwhile, the new government statistician, Professor Samuel Kobnenim, says the service will go beyond releasing inflation figures by providing analytical reports. He spoke to a reporter, Ebenezer Ejikumbuatin. Macroeconomic variables, one of them being the exchange rate. Again, in subsequent releases, we'll try as much as possible to link the inflation rate and its rate of sensitivity to variables such as interest rate, poverty, and unemployment. And from my training, I always say that you need to treat inflation just as we treat education within the social interventions and paradigm. So inflation from an economic point of view is very critical and underscores all the macroeconomic variables that we deal with as different economies. Professor Enim said management will consolidate the high standards of deliverables. Ghana Studies Car Service uses the Ghana Living Standard Survey as basis to identify commodities that are most consumed by Ghanaians and thereafter the weights that are associated with it. When I took office, I decided that we need to go back to what Ghana Studies Car Service has been doing in the past, where we go beyond using the Ghana Living Standard Survey to identify the basket and the weights that are associated with it. But make an attempt to go around the three zonal areas of the country and further validate this basket and the weight. He promised transparency. So the transparency is what I've tried to explain in terms of involving people in terms of how the um, basket is arrived at and how the weights are arrived at. One thing we're going to do in terms of transparency moving forward is that all these commodities are going to be made available on our website. If we paid particular attention to the definition, it talked about general and